And that's how my routine starts when I'm getting ready for a flight. It's about 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and this time we headed straight to Delhi from Vancouver on a non stop 16 hour flight. Generally, at this time, due to geopolitical reasons and airspace closure, we used to have a technical halt that is a refueling halt at Vienna. But this time, we really got lucky, all thanks to strong tailwinds, which has pushed us all the way to New Delhi. As I was running through my flight related documents today, I realized our fuel requirement for today's flight was absolutely to the brim, and it was roughly about 145,000 kgs. iPads checked, to go mail checked, stationaries for the flight checked. That's all it is, and that's how I travel light and simple for my flight. As I walk down, my intake row was waiting for me, and our flight began with a flight safety briefing. The cabin crew briefing is also a very critical part of the flight, and it begins with a quick introduction. To avoid flight delays and passenger discomfort, the parking location of the aircraft is informed to them so that the cabin crew can reach well in time and can fix cabin issues if any. A typical flight safety briefing includes, but it's not limited to the procedures and protocols that need to be followed in case of in-flight medical emergencies, in-flight technical emergencies, forecasted and unforeseen turbulence, security threats, so on and so forth. As I was in my room running through my flight papers, I did you all realize that I said the fuel requirement for today's flight is 145,000 kgs and not 145,000 liters. That's right, the fuel requirement in aviation is always measured in terms of pounds and kgs, unlike liters and gallons. Quite unusual to measure the quantity of fluid in terms of pounds and kgs, right? Why is that so? And this would be a topic of discussion in our today's vlog. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. For those who are visiting my channel for the first time, my name is Captain Mac, an ex Abus, currently a training captain on 777. And for returning viewers and subscribers, welcome back. Well, I'll just get back to you on this in a while as I walk you through the flight. We reached the airport in about 30 minutes, quickly checked in our bags, and we started off with a flight briefing. The briefing generally takes anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes to get over and there are a couple of things that we need to go through. To start off with, we all, that is the cockpit crew and the cabin crew, undergo a breath analyzer test to make sure none of us are intoxicated before operating a flight. Then we sign a reporting form with a reporting time which officially marks the beginning of your flight duty. And talking about flight duty time, it is a fixed duration of time approved by our regulator and it varies from sector to sector within which the pilot is supposed to complete his flight duties. The flight duty starts when you sign the reporting form and typically ends when the aircraft is fully parked and the engines are shut. And now let's get back to our topic. Why is the fuel requirement in aviation measured in terms of weight which is in kgs and pounds unlike volume which is in liters and gallons? Let me explain this in the simplest way possible with some examples and visuals. Let's dive in. To start off with, let's first understand the difference between volume and weight. Volume is how much space something takes and weight is how heavy it is. For example, from the image, you can clearly see although the volume of both the bottles are same, the weight of both the bottles are different because of the varying densities of the fluids that are being present inside the bottles. Likewise, the fuel tank capacity of an aircraft is fixed by volume and not by weight. That's because the weight of the fuel depends upon its density, which in turn depends upon its temperature. Greater the fuel temperature, lower the fuel density and hence lower the weight of the fuel for a given volume. And in aviation, what really matters is the weight and not the volume for the following reasons. 
Every aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight and aviation is all about precision and performance. Weight affects how the airplane takes off, climbs and lands. At the center of gravity, which needs to be perfectly balanced for the aircraft to be stable in flight, depends upon the quantum of weight as well as the position of the weight. Also, the jet engines generate thrust based on how much mass, that is the weight of the fuel that is being burnt and not the volume of the fuel that is being burnt. And the thrust that is being produced from the engine is something that keeps the aircraft moving from point A to point B. For example, let's say my aircraft engines need to produce about 80,000 pounds of thrust to keep the aircraft moving and the weight of the fuel that is required to produce this much amount of thrust is roughly about 2.4 kgs per second. Now, depending upon the temperature of the fuel, the density of the fuel also changes. So, this 2.4 kgs of fuel could be 2.2 liters in case if the temperature is low or 2.6 liters in case if the temperature is high. So, what remains constant to produce the required amount of thrust that is 80,000 pounds is 2.4 kgs wherein the volume of the fuel weighing 2.4 kgs consumed by the engine to produce that constant thrust keeps changing. Hence, calculating the fuel requirement for a flight in terms of weight that is kgs and pounds is much simpler and easier when compared to volume which is in terms of liters and gallons as the fuel requirement in terms of kgs remains fixed wherein in terms of volume it keeps changing depending upon the density and temperature. That's exactly why pilots and engineers rely on kilograms or pounds because it's more stable and accurate. And these are the reasons why fuel is measured in terms of weight that is kgs and pounds and not in terms of volume which would be liters and gallons. Here we are at New Delhi after a long, tiring and a peaceful flight. Quickly completed my post-flight breath analyzer test and I was on my way to the hotel. In the beginning of this vlog, as we were departing from Vancouver, if you could recollect, I also spoke about flight duty time limitations of a pilot. And I'm sure a couple of them watching this vlog who are also frequent flyers would have experienced in real time or from the newspapers about pilot refusing to operate a flight citing flight duty time limitations. But the question here is how does a pilot even know before operating the flight that he would be bursting his duty time limitations by the time he completes his flight. Well, we shall discuss this in one of the upcoming vlogs and also do let me know in the comment section in case if you want me to make a vlog on any particular topic. And today's question for you all is why is the power output from a jet engine is generally expressed in terms of pounds per square area instead of brake horsepower? Do like, share, comment and subscribe and do not forget to hit the bell notification to get instant updates. I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, bye bye.